Let me explain something. That's a female leopard traveling with a pride of lions. And the leopard was, a. Uh offering herself to the male lion. However, the male lion completely rejected her. But this raises the question, can they breed? And the answer is yes. This is a leopard, a leopard-lion hybrid. Although usually it's a female lion and a male leopard because they're a lot closer in size. They grow to about seven feet long and 250 pounds. So like right in the middle of a lion and a leopard. They also have a mane like a lion, but they act like a leopard. They climb trees and swim in water. That's terrifying. But most of the leopards we've ever seen were in captivity. This doesn't usually happen in the wild. Moral of the story, even though the lion rejected her, this could turn out to be something crazy. And as always, follow for more Bones. Animals are full of good events. Please watch TDL. Father Carlos Crespi Croci was born in Milan, Italy in 1891 and died in 1982. He was a Salesian monk who dedicated his life to worship and charity and lived in the small town of Cuenca in Ecuador for more than 50 years. A man of many talents, he had been an educator, botanist, anthropologist, musician, and above all, humanitarian. Because of his missionary work, he became close to the indigenous people of Ecuador and was a highly respected person among the tribes who considered him a true friend of theirs. The indigenous people gave Father Crispy gifts of ancient artifacts to thank him for the work he was doing to help them. They said the items brought to him had been found in subterranean tunnels in the jungles of Ecuador, spanning more than 200 kilometer, starting from the village of Cuenca. The amazing artifacts given to him had uncanny similarities with civilizations of the East and were enough to fill up a large museum. Father Crespi was trusted by the Vatican to open a museum in the Salesian school at Cuenca. And up until 1960, it was the largest museum in Ecuador. However, Crespi suggested that there was an obvious connection between the artifacts and the ancient civilizations of Babylon and Sumeria. What he did not consider is that such a suggestion would go against mainstream opinions. A short time later, the museum was burnt down and most of the artifacts were destroyed, with the exception of a few that he managed to save. However, when Father Crespi died, all the remaining artifacts were hidden from public view forever. Rumors suggest that the artifacts were shipped to the Vatican. Father Crespi claimed that most of the symbols and prehistoric representation on the artifacts are older than the Great Flood. Explorer Richard Wingate mentioned that the artifacts were identified as Assyrian, Egyptian, Chinese, and African. The credibility of Father Crespi and his collection is not under doubt. However, the age and the origin of the items is still unknown, and the fact that all of them vanished makes it more difficult to research further into their origins. Just imagine what the revelation of such a treasure would mean for the books of archaeology, and our perception of human origins. That's why we're always preaching honesty here, you see? So that you can get to understand uh, such things. Well, good vibes, man. Much love to everybody. This is one of the biggest reasons for the extraterrestrial cover-up. They don't want you to know how these beings actually look on these shams. I had a profound vision where I seen nine ether uh, individuals operating uh, spacecrafts, which you would call UFOs or UAPs, um, and they were uh, they, they were highly technologically advanced. Most aren't aware that we come from different star systems, and that religion was forced on us uh, through uh, our, the colonizers, the, the individuals that colonized us and subjugated us uh, to actually prevent us from thoroughly being aware of who we truly are. The Nephilim are our descendants. Some of these beings are offspring of the uh, Anunnaki as well as the Gigi. This is what the Book of Enoch consistently talked about and why the Council of Nicaea made sure it was removed. This is one of the main reasons they don't want us to know who we truly are. Now that we're propelling into the Golden Age, these uh, cosmic star families will be making a return. And we will be uh, made aware of who we actually are. A lot of us aren't from here, okay? This whole planet was utilized as an experiment. 
I'll say for entertainment purposes, okay? Um, this planet was used as, a, as an experiment. That's what the whole Garden of Eden was uh, predicated on in the book of Genesis, was Gen Isis, all right? It was uh, the genealogy of Isis. And I tell y'all, in my vision, none of these superheroes, Superman, none of these superheroes had anything on us. We were extremely, extremely powerful. In fact, what if I told you the whole Superman story was actually stolen from uh, the concept of Anu and the concept of the Anunnaki and a nine ether race. All right, so let's get into it. The S on Superman chest represent the Kundalini serpent rising. Uh, the red on the suit represent Nibiru. The blue represents Sirius. The yellow represent our central sun. And him powering up from the sun is a representation of the melanocyte, so the U melanin for the nine ether that absorb Ra. All right, so Superman alone is the personification of the Anunnaki. What y'all deem is uh, Jesus Christ was actually Haru, which is a personification of the divine principle realized, realizing that you are that God or goddess. As I express in my vision, we are all going to be telepathically in sync. We, we aren't going to have to verbally communicate anymore, okay? As the frequency increase, we will become telepaths. This is how they spoke in Atlantis and Lemuria. They spoke telepathically. A lot of these uh, mountains are going to start waking up as well, okay? A lot of these are, are Nephilims. A lot of these are giants. A lot of these are titans high in these mountains. And when it comes time for the planetary shift, a lot of these mountains are going to start literally coming to life and walking off the ground and getting a sword or they axe and remembering what the hell happened to them as well. And as I express, this isn't uh, really about the color of your skin so much, but the color of your aura. Because there's many different biological makeups in the Galactic Federation. And this is the embodiment of the Galactic, the Galactic Federation and what's going on now, all right? A lot of entities from different star systems and star clusters are all forming to come together to try to go against the same malnullivant forces that just want to subjugate the planet for their own selfish being uh, needs. There's other beings all over the universe that just want harmony and don't want to be left the hell alone and not made out of, of a food source. So that comes with us doing better as well as far as the animals on our own planet, using them as food sources and things of that nature. Um, all of that uh, is all predicated on a heart chakra frequency and returning back to nature. All right. So and, and this is uh, this is what the time is now. OK, every 26,000 years is a new cycle and we are at the precipice of that cycle now. Peace, love and light to everyone. Good vibes to everybody, man. We are all one. One love. Up is up. Down is down. If I a visual aid, I have a pin. If I release it from my grip, what happens? Anybody? Correct. It falls. Was that gravity? No. The molecules that make up this pin plastic the ink it's got a little rubber grip on it are more dense than the molecules of the air surrounding it the molecules of the air will not support the weight so they fall so it falls when you let go like that density and mass make an object heavy there's no there's no gravity Simple. Up is up. Down is down. Objects fall because they're heavy. If it floats, it's lighter than air. Helium. Fill a balloon with helium. It goes up. Filled it with hydrogen. It would also go up. Lighter than air. Floats. Heavier than air. Falls. It's not complicated. Gravity is a god because it's the answer. It's the magic answer to everything. Why? How does this? How does the? How does the Earth keep us on, but it still spins around? It's still orbits and gravity. How's the moon? How's the type of gravity? Why doesn't the moon fly off to the sun? Because the sun's got bigger gra gravity. It's the way gravity works. Don't worry about it, it's gravity. Gravity is the god that explains everything very, very magically. There is no need for gravity whatsoever if we're on a fixed stationary plane and the, the heavenly bodies are, are simply going above us. The reason why you don't fall off is because you're denser than the air that under, underneath you. It's just again Occam's razor. It's a straightforward explanation. Basically, the perspective of living on a globe is preposterous, it's ridiculous, it's hilarious. How we are taught to perceive the world we live on, because basically, even when trying to <laughs> depict it, it's hilarious. They have no way of depicting it without it being comical. You have whales climbing the curve like it's absurd 
how could we live on a globe? The core of the earth, you know, that you've seen the cutaway, this much is crust and mantle and magma and liquid molten stuff at the center. Um, the deepest hole that's ever been drilled in the history of mankind to date, even with today's technology, eight miles. If you want to say this is what the first eight miles looks like, I will believe you because they can show me the hole. This goes eight miles down, okay? It goes eight miles down. That's how thick is the plane that we live on? It's at least eight miles because <laughs> they've drilled down that far, but they can't go any farther. It just, it doesn't work. So it's speculation. With a sphere of 4,000 miles radius being a, a spun round once every 24 hours, a little bit of calculations will show that that person there is being spun round at about a thousand miles an hour and it doesn't know it. I mean, this is obvious nonsense. Ah, leave your thoughts on that, good people. Hypothetical situation where somebody that thinks the earth is a ball sues somebody that thinks the earth is a level topographical plane in court. Don't you think if we were actually on a ball that spins, is on a tilt, orbits the sun, and chases the sun through space, don't you think it would be pretty easy to win that court case? Well, guess what? I tricked you. It wasn't a hypothetical situation. This actually happened in a Georgia court. Zen Garcia, a Christian flat earther, not only won once, but twice in court with a glober that was trying to prove that the earth has curvature or that it spins over 50 miles an hour. Here are some of the details of the court case. Thompson countersued Garcia for $15,000 and not lost once but twice again. <laughs> Reason the judgment was not ruled in Thompson's favor is because he tried to prove the earth's curvature by using a computer software that he designed and Garcia rejected it because the contest agreement stated that he wanted a real world experiment. You actually look into the court case, you'll read here, the contest. Um, this is Garcia. I decided to hold a $5,000 contest to challenge to anybody that could confirm in two scientific or people and verifiable experiments the supposed curvature of the earth in the rate and manner cited by the accepted formula for determining such declination. We're down here. William Thompson applied to the contest but was never able to produce not even one real-world verifiable scientific experiment which could or would confirm the rate of curvature as decided upon the mathematicians and scientists themselves should the earth be 24,901 miles in sphere circumference we don't want your pretty little drawings we don't want your silly math equations we don't want your cgi or your computer programs we want real world terrestrial observable demonstrable repeatable experiments to prove the curvature of the earth but no one's ever gonna give us that garcia went hard in this court case he even brought some straight up facts that the earth is a level plane the canal is 100 miles long without any locks, so the water within is an uninterrupted continuation of the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. When it was constructed, guess what? The Earth's curvature was not taken into account. He also cited the longest bridge built in China, built over four years by 10,000 workers at the cost of $8.5 billion, a startling 164,800 meters in length, like the canals and railroads mentioned above, did not take into account the rate of curvature as cited by Robotham in the formula cited above. And they'll say that eight inches per mile squared isn't a good way to measure the curvature of the earth. It's off by a couple hundred feet compared to all of the other ones up to a thousand miles. We're only talking about a hundred miles or so here, guys. <laughs> this is even this is that good people of that. Okay, look, the whole world wants to talk about this temple thing. When is a temple going to be rebuilt? So, um, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be one built. Maybe not. But let's think about this for a second. Because we know as soon as they get ready to build it, it's going to cause World War Three and Four combined. So let's compare a couple of things. Let's look at the temple that Solomon, Zerubbabel, and Herod built. We've got a stone structure 
that is permanent. It doesn't move. And then let's compare that to the temple that God actually tells Moses to build. It's the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Mishkan. What's the difference between the permanent tabernacle is that this one is mobile. Okay? They moved this all around. But here at Shiloh, it stood for 369 years. But what's another key indicator of this temple? This temple, the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh HaKodeshim, is covered in 11 layers of what? Skin. Why is the world looking for a permanent structure that can't be moved? Maybe we should be looking for a temple that is portable and covered in skin. One is made out of stone, the other one is covered in skin, animal skins. Yeshua HaMashiach talks of this. He says that we are the temple. This case even goes back to the Tanakh. Well, yes, I, I think probably at some point in the future we're going to have one, but maybe we're looking at it from the wrong mindset at this point in time. So that's just... Because we, our body is the temple. For sure. And Christ lives in us. Yes. Well, the laws are here. He does, but the laws are here. Right? This is going to be Jeremiah 31, 31. Do you think this could tie into the transhumanism? I, think, I like, yeah, that's a really good point. You know, is it the issue of the, what is the abomination of desolation that's spoken of by Daniel the prophet? You know, is this uh, the millions and millions of babies that we are aborting every year, every country, including Israel, the United States, Europe? Um, is this going to be the transhumanism? Is this going to be taking the DNA and altering DNA, the foundation, the very foundation of all human life? And we start to alter that. Why is that not the abomination? These are just different ways to think about it. I'm not. This is not definitive. It's not dogmatic. It's just we need to think a little bit differently and more spiritually towards what uh, what Christ tells us, Yeshua, and uh, and the Scriptures tell us. But you still think there could be a third, another temple? At some point, we've got Ezekiel's temple. Uh, I think we, we're going to have to have it at some point. When that is, I have no idea. I do know nothing good is going to happen once that's built, because we know that the, uh, the Antichrist is going to stand up there and proclaim himself of God. No good comes from that. So it could happen on the Temple Mount, and they're ready to build the, third, the next temple, aren't they? Well, look, if we read Solomon's the scripture of Solomon building the temple, it was prefabricated, and that the sound of a hammer could be heard when he put it together. That's 3,000 years ago. How fast do you think they can put together a prefab uh, building today? <laughs> My guess is less than a week. And we've seen a lot of signs of that they're preparing to build it already. Uh, you have the Temple Institute. This may be some of the Temple Institute stuff, I'm not sure. Uh, those guys are the experts, and you should go there, film everything, talk to them, uh, get as much information, because uh, the Sanhedrin is in place, they have the actual altar, they have the labor, they have everything. They're ready to rock and roll. But, you know, that's not for us. I don't know that we're supposed to push this. I think this is something that, that God will put in his time. Mm -hmm. That's just me. But time is short, so it seems. Time is short. It, it, it may be weeks. Really? I don't know. But it's literally... He, he could... says, after everybody hears, all right, from a believer's standpoint, they like to talk about Yeshua says that this gospel will be preached throughout all the nations. Okay, that's from a believing standpoint. That means if you believe God is justice, all right, that means every human being is going to get to hear the word of God. There may be a few, and once that happens, if you believe Yeshua, he says, then the end will come. Me personally, I happen to believe this. So we're very close if you believe you should. Oh man, that's why you should always be loving and caring, you see? <laughs> I just don't get how this makes sense. Okay, but this makes sense. You know why this makes sense and this doesn't? It's because this was rammed in your fucking head like a jelly donut since you were a child. That's why this makes sense and nothing else can change your mind. But let's just say, what makes sense about a spinning ball of water hovering and, and hurling through space, empty space, what makes sense about that? I'll tell you what makes sense about this is that we live here, all right? We live in this th these lands right here. And if you keep going in a fucking boat, you're going to get to these ice areas, okay? Because you're further away from the sun, all right? So when you get there, it's going to be really hard to travel beyond it. So not a lot of people 
will have done it. But it's been done multiple times. There's accounts of Admiral Richard E. Byrd, you know, Sir George Hubert Wilkins, E.W. Barrington, all doing this, okay? But you want to act like it didn't happen. That's fine. That's fine. But what doesn't make sense about water being level, you're in a boat, if you keep going, there's more fucking land. That doesn't make sense to you. But this does. A spinning ball of water in the middle of space makes fucking sense. Okay, and just a little bit of evidence for you. This book, World Beyond the Pose by F. Amadio Giannini, was written in 1959, okay? Right there, copyright, 1959, all right? This is what it shows in 1959. There's your flat earth model with the ice ring and all that shit. And let's just look right here. U.S. Naval Force Flight 2,300 miles beyond South Pole, January 13th, 1956. And it points right there, okay? That was Admiral Richard E. Byrd. Then you got this one. Connecting land areas beyond South Pole, discovered by Hearst Wilkins Antarctic uh, Expedition in 1928. And that points over here, okay? Then you got this over here. Uh... Endless connecting land beyond North Pole discovered February 1947 by Ab Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. And it points there. All right. Now let's look at, look at this map. That would have been these two areas. 1928, Admiral Byrd and uh, uh, Wilkins discovered this and Byrd discovered this in 1946. So... I mean, all this stuff is at your fingertips, guys. If you're just willing to pick up a book that doesn't say textbook on it. Oh, man. You see people, good people of us. Please spread it out. In this video, she explains the truth about being in the present moment. Make sure you watch until the end and let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to change your life in like five seconds, if you'll let me. Um, you know when you play games and you move your little guy along like Candyland? You know, you go along the track and you have to roll the dice and then you have to walk forward and you have to take the next steps, especially like the game of life. You have to keep moving forward. That's not the way life really works. This is how life works. You stand still. The best thing you can do is be in the present moment. Be happy, be present, be fully with me here, fully watching this video with me, not thinking about what's coming later, fully in your work day, not thinking about what you're having for lunch, not thinking about anything in the past or the future, being present here, and whatever you desire, think of it like a little pin on your future that naturally is coming towards you. Time moves through you. You don't chase time. You don't chase anything. You stand still. And the better you get at staying present, the faster that pin comes into you. Time comes through you. You do not chase time. You attract. That's where that affirmation comes from. I don't chase. I attract. Time moves through you. You don't chase time. Stay present. Oh man, uh, that's new. It's good vibes, man. Did you know that good people? Just in case somebody has forgotten, this was the first image placed into the background of the first iPhone ever made. So everybody, consequently, that charged their iPhone and turned it on was subliminally programmed to think that this is what the Earth looks like. A lot of people probably turned on their phone thinking that this was a photo from a satellite or something or like a space mission or something when today I'm going to show you a NASA.gov article explaining how did we get the blue marble photo. All I searched was Brian Simmons NASA data. Here you see him called Mr. Blue Marble. He was a data visualizer and designer. Open up said link again NASA.gov and conversations with Goddard talking about him. This is the important section down here though get to said important section and it says the hard part was creating a flat map of the earth's surface with four months of satellite data then we wrapped the flat map around a ball honestly i i don't really think i need to say anything else so 
Go ahead and share this with somebody that you've been debating the shape of the Earth with, and the only evidence that they have is the images that NASA's producing. Obviously, these aren't very reliable. Oh my god, you just get so weird. What do you think about that? You see, I'm surprised. An amazing Bigfoot sighting, just 20 feet from the camera. And here you get to see Bigfoot. Oh, and here he comes, he looks like he's tiptoeing towards the camera. It's like he has also seen the camera as the camera was seeing him. Huh? The Bigfoot is most probably surprised about what's going on, you see? Oh, and he is approaching with the caution. Do you think the Bigfoot can see the camera over there? Or maybe this is not Bigfoot, it's someone with a mask, just pretending there to scare people. What do you think, you see? Humans are full of uh, good vibes and uh, sometimes they can have uh, creepy fish behaviors, you see? But anyway, if all people are uh, just uh, gotten and impacted by love, we cannot be full of good vibes. And there can be no bad energy around us, you see? We can also be able to identify stuff like Bigfoot and know what they need in this life, you see? Oh, be kind in this life. Oh, that is nice, man. That uh, good vibes old man took a seat there that he was given and passed it to another person. This is nice, man. This is incredible. Ah, this is lovely, man. This is just great. And uh, this wonderful good vibes guy was holding the umbrella for the other prayer. But this prayer is full of good vibes and kindness. And he decided to take the shade with the, this good vibes guy, you see? This is just nice, man. This is good advice. This is humanity. Loving and caring for your neighbor like you do for yourself. You see? This is nice, man. Thanks, good people of Earth, for always hitting the like button. Leaving some comments there, hitting the super thanks if possible. It's always a very motivating gesture. You see? We can also take a walk there or a look at our merchandise store. Try and grab something. You see? And if you see nothing there that pleases you or you'd like to be upgraded, leave some comments. That way you can have all merchandise fit for everybody, you see? So I'm out here walking my dog as I do every night, and I'm telling y'all right now, the moon is different. This video is not going to do it justice. No, it's not going to do it justice, but I'm just telling you, I... I look at the moon all the time. I'm very conscious of the sun, the moon, and stars and what God is saying through it. And I'm conscious of the moon cycle and I'm telling you the moon is different right now. I don't know exactly what it means. I've seen a couple videos, uh, other videos of people posting and talking about this. Um, I have had a couple dreams about the moon in the last year that I know are from God. I'm not, still not quite sure exactly what they mean, but I'm telling you right now, the moon is acting different. Y'all better stay prayed up. Get as close to God as you can, because um, I think we're about to go on a roller coaster ride. Okay, so I think I've just realized what it might be, why the moon's acting like this. This is, okay, so the word moon is where the word month comes from. This is the last month, y'all. So... Let me show you something. So you see the moon right there? You see the little crescent? That means it's the beginning of the month, okay? You can tell by how illuminated it is that the month started a few days ago, maybe two or three days ago. Now I'm talking about the month on God's calendar, not on the Gregorian calendar, not on that evil calendar, on God's calendar. God's calendar, the month goes by the moons. The word month comes from moon. So that little crescent moon right there means it's the beginning of the month when you see the crescent moon right after sunset that's the beginning of the month so when this moon goes full and then it goes back to a new moon again that's the end of the month and right at the end of the month is when this eclipse is going to happen and i think the moon is acting funny i don't know how else to word it because this eclipse is a big deal it's a sign from god that we're supposed to repent God has been talking to us, and I'm getting Holy Spirit confirmation right now. God has been talking to us, trying to get us to repent for a long time. He started working on me a long time ago, and I was hard-headed and stubborn. I didn't listen to him for a long time. But back in 2022, toward the end of 2022, 
He told me that the time for repentance is coming to an end. And this is way before I knew about this eclipse. And then he revealed some things to me about the eclipse. That, you know, it goes through a lot of cities named Nineveh. And Nineveh is a, is a place that God told Jonah to go tell to repent. Long story short, you can go watch some of my videos that I've made about the eclipse. I might make another one. But I think this is why the moon is acting strange. It's because it's the last month before this eclipse, which is a sign from God that we all have to get right with him. And we need to do it like today, y'all, because judgment is coming. There is a judgment that's coming. And those that are right with God don't have anything to worry about. But those that are not right with God, it might not work out so good. So get right with God today before it's too late. I love you guys. Hello, good people of earth. Thanks you very much for watching after this far. You see, I find that video a bit creepy and mind blowing because myself I've been looking at the moon and I've been really wondering what's really going on. You see, there's creepy stuff up there and sometimes you wonder how things happen like that you see but anyway you see all that really matters despite all these things despite the chaos in the universe the madness that you've seen in different videos and different beliefs is what we do as humans in this earth all of us everyone from different places from wherever you are watching from you see tell us in the comment section and spread love please kindly because god is love and god is forgiveness and god is peace and God is unity among one or another. You see, among us the whole world. That way we can unite, be full of love and good vibes. And uh, God can have mercy on us and uh, things can be fine. You see, good vibes and I wish you luck and lots of uh, love to everybody. Peace and love be with you, man. Stick around for some very, very fire episode that will be coming soon. Good vibes, man. Bye-bye. We are out. Peace.